Welcome to the Capital Discussions Roundtable. I'm Tom Nunnemaker with my good friend Casey Platt. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer the Capital Discussions is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. And again, this is for educational purposes only. So with that disclaimer out of the way, Casey, I'm going to give you the ball so you can start sharing your screen. But I just wanted to, uh, to let you know we appreciate you coming. Uh, Casey and I go back a long way. I think, uh, when did we first meet? Back maybe 2007, 2008 yeah. time frame? Right, Tom. Um yeah, so uh, I've known Casey a long time. He's a good friend, a good trader, and um, I'm really happy to have him on here. He has some great stories about gamma scalping in the pits, and I think you did it uh, you know, for a long time. You were on the floor at CBOE for, what, 20 years plus, right? Yeah, right. From 1984 to 2007, that's what I did. I worked my way up. It was great. And, and uh, Casey's actually going to start a trading group, I think, on Monday. So I'll, I'll have it on the schedule already. We've got – it's called Trading Group 3. For lack of a better name, we can obviously change that. But um, just so people know, if they want to uh, keep following you, that there's going to be an opportunity to do that. But um, with that introduction, Casey, uh, you ready to share your screen? So Sure. Um, I believe I, I might, I'm not doing it right now, Tom. Uh, not yet. Okay. All right. I thought I was already. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, Stephen Clapp says Casey was his mentor at Shared Mentoring back in 2008. Oh, wow. How about that? Small world. It is a small world. Um, Casey, if you want to share, you can probably go uh, Control-Alt-D like desktop, and that should share your screen. Okay. I got there, it. There we go. It's coming up. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to maybe give your a little background of, you know, sure. who you are, because people that maybe don't know who you are as well as I do. So, Right. Um, I, uh, my name is Casey Platt. I uh, am a former CBOE market maker, and I have uh, been around the brokerage industry since 1984 when I got out of college. And I, I started on the CBO floor when there was runners and it was a great time of life because I yeah, found myself moved downtown on a $12,000 salary as a runner and uh, trying to work my way up, trying to uh, learn options. At that time, it was amazing. And there's only one exchange and very few people really understood how to price options, how to use options as a strategic investment. That's probably the best book if you're looking for a book. Options as a strategic investment. What a great book. I remember uh, reading that right out of college as a part of my MBA for 2000 and, uh, or I guess at that time, 1985. And uh, I worked my way up. I got a uh, job as a stock clerk executing stock orders. So in 1987, I literally sat in the trading pit and called the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with orders so that market makers who stood all around me could hedge their option trades. It was a, I, and the whole, I, my whole idea was, you know, maybe I could meet a market maker. Maybe I could meet uh, someone that could help me teach stuff that, that was beyond that book, how to um, options as a strategic investment. And uh, I ended up do I ended up meeting a trader and, uh, working with him for a while and eventually getting on a seat. Uh, it was a real, uh, it's, it's kind of a story for another day. But uh, what I really enjoy about options is that there are so many ways to use them. And I think the strategy, the strategy I'd like to talk about today is kind of the opposite of what most people like to do uh, in today's trading world. It seems to me the more I listen to uh, various traders or questions from customers, I get uh, questions about how I sell option premium. I want to sell premium. Options are a wasting asset. Why would I ever buy an option? I remember a guy saying to me, I'll never buy another option. 
Well, the reason you buy options is to defend or to profit from moves either way, up or down. And the goal is that you're able to profit from giant price moves, just as we're seeing today. Let's look at this chart here. Look at this S&P chart here today. There's how much we've moved. And, and Tom was outlining it right before the start. It's crazy, these big moves. And uh, it's it's really, if, if, you were, if you're short premium and you can feel what I'm getting at it, the idea is that it's hard to, you know, you're always, when you're short premium, you're always doing the wrong thing to defend your delta. You're always trying to flatten your position because the market's moving too far one way or another. And to flatten your delta out, well, you're going to have to do something that's going to cost you some money. Well, that's, you know, at the same instance when you're short premium, every day those options are decaying a little bit, working in your favor. Well, the other side of that is the strategy I'm going to talk about today. It's it's being long premium. It's realizing up front that you're going to have to pay for that that you're you're doing the wrong thing. You're buying options. You're buying a wasting asset. And it's a dangerous situation which means that you have to be an aggressive trader when you're uh trading long premium. Um I wanted to give you an example. I'm going to bring this over here and show you that when I was a market maker, uh, this is too big. Okay, but this will give it to you anyways. This was a position, you know, as a market maker, every day you made a market in specific stocks. In this instance, I, I'm going to highlight with my, uh, let me know if you can see this uh, with my cursor. This yeah, we stock can see is it. Biology. Huh? You can see it, Tom? Okay. Yeah, it looks good. So this stock is Biogen, B-I-I-B. I I don't know if the symbol, I think the symbol is the same nowadays, but my, um, you can see in this instance, um, this is, this is uh, before the advent, uh, before people uh, had desktops. Every day you'd get a little picture of uh, your risk. And in this instance, you could see that either way Biogen moved, you know, I was profitable. Every day in, 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 in this sheet here, it gives you all this detail about my uh, about this position. But you could see here as aggregate every day, this uh, Biogen position, uh, I had 2,500 uh, gamma, 2,500 gamma. And what that means is that every day when Biogen moved $1, I could buy or my delta would change by 2,500. In other words, delta, let's go back and do some definitions. And I think uh, that's the best way to do it. If, if delta is the rate of change of your position versus the underlying stock or index or commodity, well, gamma is the derivative of that. Gamma is the rate of change of your delta. Let me tell you, let me use, let me point out what this means. So in this instance, it was showing my delta is short 700 and my gamma is long 2,500. So my rate of change to my delta would say, okay, well, every time the underlying moves, one dollar my delta will change 781 it will be longer or it will be on the way down every time if it moves a dollar i'll make 781 dollars on the way up if biogen moves higher i'll lose 781 dollars that being said my gamma my rate of change of my delta would indicate that every time my biogen moves a dollar, my delta will change by 2,500, positive or negative. And you can see on the graph here how if this is my delta, 
on the way down, I got really short. And on the way up, I got really long. And as a market maker in a biotech stock, this was the way you traded it because of the fact you didn't know what was going to happen with Biogen any given day. You, you didn't know if they were going to come out with some uh, update on some new drug that might send the stock, you know, to the sky or at the same instance, you didn't know if they were going to have a price, you know, a earnings warning and the stock could go down and you couldn't predict this. And so to stay in business, to be a market maker, the, the way we like to trade was long premium, long gamma. And that had inverted, you know, because of the nature of the beast, that had its own cost. And in this instance, what I'm circling here is my theta. Every day, this position costs seven hundred dollars. That was expensive. But our thinking was number one: as long as I'm long gamma, I, I could have, I have a specific dollar value of risk that I can measure based on the premium and the options I had. And you're saying, well, where are the options you had? Well, this is the position I had right here. You can see I was short 4,800 shares of stock. I had all these options right here. And when you net it out, when you net all these out, you find yourself with a position that looks like this. Now I could sit and I take apart every option and the delta and the probability of finishing in the money or out of the money or the vega associated with that. But for tonight, for today's instance and for today's example, we're just going to look at the, the delta and the gamma. And we're going to look at examples on how you can scalp gamma and how you can use this long premium strategy to profit in situations where the market's moving up and down. And, uh, you know, and really fast. And so what I did um, when Tom asked me to do this was to come up with a, a, a small example of this. And uh, I was waiting for this to start. And I, if you can see this, uh, I wish I could change the font so I can make it a little bit bigger. But the bottom line is when um, the SPY was 2000, uh, was 207.50, I bought this straddle and actually i think it was uh, a little bit higher i think it was 207.60 when i bought this and straddle and i want you to i want to point out a couple of characteristics of it you know uh i did the same number of contracts because at the time this was pretty darn delta neutral my my when i say delta neutral i mean my delta was zero at the time when i put it on when SPY was 207 270 somewhere in there when I was executing this trade. Now, what you see has happened here is that since I put this on, I don't know if it was an hour ago or what exactly it was, you know, the SPY has moved up. Um, and therefore, my delta has moved up to 76. Now, in other words, instead of when I look at my risk profile, oh, there it is. Okay, so I wonder if I could do this, spread this out since I've got a little bit longer. Let me spread it out. Okay, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so, you know, I, I wonder if I can do one more day here. No, I can't, okay, that's fine. So what I realize here, let me, let's point out a couple of things that are really apparent here. Ten of the I'm long 10 of the 207.50 calls at 380. I'm long 10 of the 207 and a half puts from 359. Now I locked the price down and um, what I think is crazy is that the PL is still up despite the fact we've gone higher. And I'm now while the market's moving around and the market's at its highs of the day, I'm going to take a little profit on one of these, uh, on, on some of this, this position that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell one 
of these options. Um, let me figure out, I haven't used thinkorswim in a while. Let me figure out where is it? Let's add a trade. Where is that? Add simulated trades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out one of these. And let's say I got it right in between. Is that about right in between two of seven and a half? Two, okay, there, let's lock that down. That's open. That's locked. No, let's, let's say we got right there. That's right in between. Oh, now it went down. Look at how, wait, no, it went up. Well, the volatility came down. So I, I'm going to, all right, I'll use it. I'll be fair. Okay, whatever. But now what you see here is that I have, I've, I've adjusted this position. And when I put this trade on, my delta went from long 80 to long 25. So by virtue of the fact that I traded this position, and I would say I traded it aggressively, I made a little money on this, um, on the call. And now I'm net long nine calls and 10 puts. So I guess my point here is that uh, you want to be able to uh, trade in and out of this position. And you are simply letting the delta of the position dictate to you what you ought to do next when you trade when and to adjust this position. As I said, when you're trading short premium, you're always doing the wrong thing because you're adjusting your delta when it's moved against you. Gamma scalping and back spreading is another term we used to use. Works the opposite way. The position's always working for you. However, every day, the position's costing you a little bit of money. So you want to be able to make a little bit of money on this position every day. So now in the instance here, let's suppose 390, 432 minus 359, unless my math is wrong, it's 4133, 41, 73, I made $73 by selling one of these out. In other words, when I bought this one call at 359 and sold one of them out at 432, I locked in 70 something dollars, 73 dollars on this trade. Well, it cover my theta? No, it didn't. Uh, it didn't really cover my theta. Um, but I'm it's still in Chicago here, 1018, and I have all these different hours. I have a long time to uh, still flatten out this position to trade this position. And the bottom line is that. Uh, there, I saw that question out there. Is there? What are your guidelines for scalping? There are no rural guidelines. You know, this is not a, you know, a form. There's, there's no formula to come up with an answer for this. This is a, you know, uh, an art. You know, it's a craft. It's, if you know, it maybe what it, what it might be really good in conjunction with, and is, you know, your charts and your graphs and your Fibonacci's. You know, if you see a point where, oh, this is resistance right here, well, you know, maybe I should sell another call out. Well, then you got to say to yourself, well, what if I sold one more of these calls here? What would my delta be so I could do that? I could play with this on this on my platform here. Okay, so let's suppose I wanted to sell out. Let's use the midpoint here. Now, if I sold one more of these out, you can see my delta goes from being long to being short. Do I really need to be short here? I don't think so because I only have 30 deltas. I'm protected on the downside. What this does is in an environment, what this kind of position does in an environment where there's a lot of aggressive price movement, this allows this strategy, a long premium, allows you to be right in both ways. Whether you're long or short, you're right. You're just riding your delta out. Now, is it wrong to sell out one call? Well, let's suppose that we just hit a Fibonacci replacement. Um, you know, or I don't know, we hit some kind of moving average spot where it seemed like, you know, there's some resistance here. Well, maybe I want to sell one out. Uh, I don't know. There's, there's no right answer to this. Um, there's, uh, you know, it, but remember, if you, by having only 30 deltas right now, you're, you know, you're, you're not really that long. 
I mean, it's like being along 30 shares of stock. You really, the whole idea is that I put this on when the SPY was around 207.50. You really just want this position to move away from that 207.50 spot. And either way it goes, the better. You know, the some people would say, you know, well, how aggressive do you want to be? Or, you know, what's my, you know, when do I get out of this? Well, there's, uh, you know, the, the longer, the bigger move you got, and the longer you could ride it, the better off you can be. I remember there was a trading firm that traded only long gamma, and they would adjust only once a day. Um, and there once, you know, a day would be at the end of the day. That way they could really ride their delta. Is that right or wrong? I don't think there's any right or wrong. So I'm going to, I want to answer some of the questions that are, uh, I've seen pop up around this uh, trade. And um, so let me, let me start with this. When somebody asks, where do you adjust, or I, I kind of address that, but um, somebody asks, how do you know which term to pick? Um, well, you know, I, I, I point this out to you, something I know, and I think everybody knows this, the, um, the, the, the closer in you go, the more the decay is the, in other words, decay and options are logarithmic. In other words, if you took a class in college about, um, decay, in half-lives and so forth, you recognize the fact that um, options are one of these decaying assets. Uh, and the closer you get to expiration, the more they decay, the faster they decay. So you've got to buy further out options. And, and I think in this instance, I bought uh, these, uh, I think it was this one, wasn't it? I got to look here. I'm pretty sure it was this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was this one. Yeah, August 16th. Yeah, it was. So I gave myself, myself what, what you want to do is just to, you have to kind of put yourself in this mindset. You want to do everything the opposite of what you would if you were selling premium. And what I'm saying by that is when you're buying options, knowing you're doing the wrong thing, you want to give yourself, here's a great line for you, you want to give yourself time to be wrong. Um, I like to play golf. And a lot of instances, it, you have that choice. Well, should I go for the green or where am I going to miss? And you want to always give yourself that area to, you know, the you know, where's the likelihood of you're going to miss and still give yourself that opportunity to be successful. So if you're going to buy premium, you want to buy premium that's far out there. You're saying, well, the dollar value is huge on these things. Well, you're not holding this position until expiration. You're trading in and out of this position as a means of trying to lock in some profits. And, you know, as you can see, I with one of these options, and you're going to be right, you're going to be wrong. One of these options I sold right here, now it's 430 Market's going back down, and, and one of these options I said not to sell, and I missed that one. Um, well, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, as long as this continues to move away from two oh seven fifty, I'm okay. Now, um, where I was, I started to say that you know you want to give yourself time to be wrong. You want to buy options that are further away. In a volatile market, this position makes money because of the aggressive price movement, because the VIX goes higher. And in this instance, we're using, we are using VIX and we're not using RVX or we're not using uh, the, I can't think of what the one for the NASDAQ, the, the VIX for the NASDAQ is right now. Is it QVX or something like that? Bottom line is that, um, uh, you make money on these positions for all the other reasons the VIX in. Thanks, John. The, the idea is that you make money all the opposite reasons of being short premium. And it's a great strategy if you've got a, uh, 
uh, if you've got a market that's really, really moving, um, it's, it really works. Uh, if you've got a uh, market that's grinding higher, a little bit higher every day and the VIX is really low, no, I wouldn't do it. Not the right market environment. On the other hand, um, if, you, if, if we were to do a back, tech, back test here and look at the period since the that marketing term, the Brexit has, uh, Brexit has become popular, you'll realize that this strategy is very, you know, very useful, very helpful. It worked really well. Um, and you can have different levels of complexity with this. Um, I, I might say to you that what I demonstrated here is the simplest form of this strategy in the sense that uh, I bought this straddle first, and then I sold this uh, um, one call option out, and it was one of the ones I was long. Um, so what I'm saying, I guess, is that uh, this was an easy way to do it. Now, I could have, instead of this, I could have sold, you know, there's other options here. I could have used one of these. You know, these daily ones. What if I, you know, let's look at uh, what suppose instead of selling one of the ones I'm long, I want it to be absolutely flat. Well, let's look for a 20 delta right here. How about one of these? Let's sell one of these out. What we did now, we're pretty darn flat here. Okay, let's lock in that. All right, we sold out. So now, what this, I sold one 27 delta option and now the market went turned around. It was I'm a genius, you know. The the the, <laughs> the great thing is about uh, gamma scaling is that you are instantly rewarded from every trade you make because you're instantly right. Look at I sold this one out 43 and now it's 39. I could buy it back. I make three bucks. I'd probably make think or swim so happy doing this constantly. Um, now. Um, on the it's same thing, and to answer that, that question there, uh, there's a couple questions out there I want to answer. Now, on the way back down, yes, I could buy this option right back. Um, let's suppose, you know, we go down, you know, uh, and I, I buy it right back. Well, then I, I've taken, you know, I, I've, you can see my delta is back up to where it was. Um, is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Um, there is no right answer here. Um, there was another question out there. Do you lean long delta? Well, that's a good question because remember, if if the market is going higher, the chances are the volatility index, the VIX, is going lower, or you know whatever it is, the uh, you know the uh, VIXN or the RVX is probably going lower. So you you probably ought to lean a little bit long in with a long premium position, just as you probably ought to lean a little bit short with a short premium position. Well, because on the way down, if volatility expands in your short premium, well, at least you're going to be right about your delta. And, you know, my hope here is that you, you keep it simple. And at first, you know, and just trade in and out of these positions. And it allows you to really feel good about your trading because you're always doing the – your delta is telling you the right thing to do with your trading. Um, and let me, uh, let me add something else here. Number one, um, in this instance, you know, where we, we sold this uh, 10 ball to flatten out, um, boy, that was genius, wasn't it? Look at that, 43, now it's 38. Wow, genius, I tell you. Remember, these options are... Um, they, these are separate positions. Is it a time spread? Yeah, it's, it's a diagonal spread. And you can get into all the glossary terms about how difficult uh, you know, it's a, it's a long, it's a, you're long a diagonal spread or you, know, you bought the at the money, you sold the out of the money. It's kind of a vertical. It's not real. These are individual positions. And with this trading platform, you have the ability to see exactly when and where and what price you sold things out at. So this is kind of a uh, time stamp, not a time stamp, it's a uh, permission slip, let's call it, to day trade options. Why? Well, I, in the instance of this one call option I sold here, I sold it because I was long and I flattened out. 
in the instance of this one option here, um, my delta told me what to do, and I was right. Or was the delta right? So you've got to recognize the fact that it's not you being right. Don't get egotistical about this. Trade your position. Don't let the position, you know, dictate what you, you know, you, you know, the, in this instance, opposite of short premium position, where the position dictates that you ought to, you know, get long now to make sure your delta is right or, you know, sell some, sell a future to flatten out your delta. In this instance, your delta tells you what you ought to do. I almost okay. hesitated. Yeah. There were a couple of questions on how long are you in the trade? Do you hold overnight? That kind of thing. Oh, all right. Well, I'm, I can I can help you with that. Yeah. Um, I I would hold this position overnight because of the fact that it really you know that could be your instance when it really does work, Tom. You know, you think about how uh, much the futures have moved overnight. In the ARCA extended session, you don't know, you could buy S and P, you know, you could buy SPY as a means of scalping your delta. You don't necessarily have to trade options versus it. But if you got up at 6:30 in the morning this morning and saw, and, and you were neutral when you went to bed, and the SPY was down 12 points, and you realize that oh my gosh, I have, uh, you know, I have I have a real winner here. This is the way you would be able to buy a dip. Think about that. Think about if you put this position on today, and we were neutral right here. We are pretty darn neutral right here. Eight, and then tomorrow we get up and we're at, uh, you know, we're we're up 20 points, and and that happens. You know, we could sell a SPY out and use that as a trading vehicle, or. At the same instance, we could wait and sell out some of our long calls. The idea is that, again, you've got to, the, as long as the position moves around in, in an instance just the way it is right now, it's probably going to give you an opportunity to take and to pay for this, this uh, theta that you have in this position, as long as it's moving around. Is this, an, is this the way you buy a dip? It sure is. Um, is this the way you trade every rally? A lot of people in a market like we've had recently, you know, when it really moves around and they're expecting volatility, they like to fade every rally. Well, there was a question earlier, Tom, you know, about, uh, you know, when do you scalp and when do you sell? Well, if you get a rally, I mean, look at this, uh, you know, look at this move we've had here. This you know, this kind of a move uh, is is allows you to capture this kind of a position allows you to capture that kind of move. Um, let me give you a couple other little hints I might I'd like to pass along. This position is best done on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday early in the week, first half of the week. Why? The thing that works every day, including the weekends. So you've got to be aggressively trading this with the idea that you, know, you want to pay for the decay of these options of this position every day. So there's another reason why instead of, you know, you find yourself with the market up when you wake up in the morning and you sell a spy out, well, you know, another way to do it, instead of selling a S and SPY short or selling a, a long one if you have it, you would use this position as a means of simply uh, flattening out. But you'd also be, instead of doing that, if you waited till the open, you also might find yourself able to sell more of the existing inventory you have, these long calls that you originally started with, as a means of capturing some of that profit. And... Uh, so I would do this on a Monday, and, and this is not something that, you know, a lot of people like to trade this because they, they feel like, wow, I'm always right about this. I'm always right about this. And, you know, at the same instance, you, you just got to be really careful about just, you know, being flat at the end of the day. 
I, I saw that last question, but it disappeared on me. What was it, Tom? Uh, the last question is, do you ever set up the position with long stock and twice as many long puts? Yes. You, it's the same thing. It's, you know, it's exactly the same thing. Um, remember, uh, here, let's just get rid of this. And, you know, you could do the same darn thing. And obviously, you and could use futures versus stock, too, if you're trading futures you options. Right. So let's suppose you bought five of these, 500, and then at the same instance, oh, look at it moving against me here. You, you might... You buy 10 of these. Oops, buy 10. And now you're flat. Uh, let's lock it in. Okay, there you go. So now, where's your where's your risk profile? It's the same thing. Well, I used a different cycle, darn it. I wasn't paying attention to the cycle. Um, you, you see what I'm saying is that you could use it, you know, you could do it and uh, with the same thing, with... Uh, Long five. Remember, long puts and long stock is long calls. That's an algebraic relationship. Um, so if you're long 500 shares of stock and you're long 10 puts, you've instantly turned five of those puts into calls, and that gives you the upside. And you've instantly left yourself the remainder of five puts. Well, you've got that same position I just described, only – not, you don't have it as large as you did when you bought 10 puts and 10 calls. But that would be the equivalent of buying 1,000 shares of stock and 20 puts would be what buying 10 calls and 10 puts is. And I'm wagering to say that the margin requirement um, for uh, using the stock will be greater than if you just use the options. I, I know that's the truth. Um, even though my buying power effect isn't on here, it's not on for some reason. Um, the, uh, In case I know you'd also talked about different structures besides like a straddle or this type of thing with the underlying and the synthetic, um, maybe something like a, a back spread. I, I know you'd mentioned that. Okay, uh, sure. You know, uh, that's a really good point, Tom. Um, let's get rid of all these because they're just, remember, they're make-believe. There's not anything here. So another way you could do it is, um, you know, you could use a back spread or a uh, long, uh, a position like this can be used in, in various ways. Uh, let's suppose, you know, you, you were thinking it, man, this is a buying opportunity of a lifetime. Well, um, what you did was, you, you said to yourself, I'm going to buy, you know, I'm going to buy some, call. I feel like buying some calls here. Okay, so you find yourself buying, you buy 10 of these two, 207 and a half puts. I don't know where I could, 207 and a half calls. Um, I'm going to lock it in right there, bang. Um, let's suppose I just got the midpoint just for the sake of argument. Okay, now let's say, let's say 30. Okay, anyways. All right, so now, you know, the market's fought its way back. I really, really like the idea of, of buying some calls right here. I think the market's going higher. Let's, we're going to sit on our hands for a little bit here, and then after a while, market goes higher. A way to you realize when you buy 10 of these calls, you have 500 deltas here. And that makes sense, too, because these were uh, at the moment, they weren't really at the money calls when we bought them here. Let me change this here. Let's make sure we're talking about the right thing here. Okay, here's a 50 delta call. Let's buy 10 of these here. We buy 10, 10. There you go. And now let's just do the midpoint here. Okay, so that's the midpoint. We're locked in. Bought 10 calls, 200, about 500 deltas roughly. Chance of finishing in the money because we're using an at the money option is roughly 50 50. Therefore, your delta roughly 50. Um, every one point move would give you a 50 cent increase or decrease in the dollar value of the option. So, a way to hedge that risk instead of selling the uh, calls out is you might use a deep call. Let's suppose, you know, we're not really looking at which call. We don't really care which call. But, you know, you see the, some of these markets are pretty darn wide here. 
Well, what, what if we were able to, uh, you know, or let's suppose we, we sold one of these somewhere in between on a rally, and this is our hedge. Well, we just took some deltas off table. So maybe we, if we wanted to be delta neutral, okay, now we sold six, so we're pretty darn neutral here. So what we're doing is we're using uh, the spread, we're using these two options in conjunction with each other to trade in and out of these options. Um, it's a way of using the, you know, the delta of the options as a means of, I guess, hedging yourself a little more finely than just to sell the underlying versus it. Um, the idea is that uh, it, you, when you're, you, you know this as well as I, this is one of the oldest, uh, when I say to you, you've got to give yourself more ways to be right, more ways to make money. Well, if you just, we all know that if you're buying these calls outright, it's only one way to make money if the market goes higher. Well, um, let's, you know, you can see, you know, you're just long here, but by selling these deltas out, you know, you're neutralizing the position. You're giving yourself some downside protection here. And really all you're doing is trading one option versus another. If the market goes down, well, you're going to try to buy some of these two oh one and a half calls in. And if the market goes higher, you're going to keep getting longer. So you're going to try to sell out some of these uh, oh eight and a half calls till maybe eventually you're sh net short the vertical spread. And the idea is that it's a trading position. A lot of people uh, don't think in terms of a trading position, and, and that's kind of the opposite of, uh, you know, if you want to uh, pierce the uh, market maker veil, we always were trading um, every day in and out of our positions and making sure our delta was flat. And at the same instance, we had uh, bids for the underlying in uh, to bracket the price movement of the stock. Well, that's different than uh, what a lot of people do nowadays where they sell premium. When you sell premium, you just want that underlying to sit tight. You just want that, you, know, you don't want price movement. That's the, you know, conundrum when, you're in a big, you know, a market that's moving around. Volatility is going to go higher. But how do you make money if you're short premium? It's really hard. That's why in a market that's moving around, a violent move on a, a back spread or a long straddle position is the way to really profit from price movement. Uh, some people like to do this in earnings plays. Dangerous, very dangerous, because during earnings plays or right before earnings, volatility really explodes, especially in individual equities. And in a lot of instances, firms have given the, uh, you know, have kind of leaked the news or give indications of what their earnings are going to be. Um, on the other hand, selling premium into Earnings plays are really dangerous. Um, you just want to make sure that you uh, know an individual equity. Um, so uh, let's go back to this position here. I, I think uh, you, you know, again, I, I get in the questions about when do you take this position off. You know, there's no right answer as to when do you take it off and when you. I know when to put it on. I know when to put it on it early in the week. It's it's really uh, there, there's no right answer as to when to take this off. When is the market going to stop moving? If I, if somebody I hate when somebody answers with a question with a question, but what I might say to you is when does this market you know stop moving like this? I don't know. Um, but it sounds like instance, like a general rule, though. You maybe want to try to exit before the weekend decay starts coming out. Yeah, you, you know that's a thought, um, and and I might say that that's true. Um, if you uh, you know if, if you know suppose like uh, if you don't see any news or you maybe have a holiday on the horizon. Um, you know, just getting through the 4th of July here, 
Uh, you know, the next holiday is obviously Labor Day, and we're in the summer slow months. But for a period of time that's historically slow, I find it amazing that, um, you know, we're getting these big price movements. Um, maybe it has something to do with this, uh, with this Brexit. Maybe it has, who knows what it has something to do with it, the election, whether they're, they're going to, you know, I don't know. I just know that the, the, the market has been aggressively moving. Um, and if I want this strategy to work, Tom, I want to do it early in the week. And I want to be disciplined about how I'm trading this position. And, you know, uh, another thing I really noticed is that the markets have widened out here a little bit. Um, so you might find yourself, you know, if you were able to buy this position, put this position on as we've outlined here, um, well, you know, to be bidding for options you know, all the time and offering out options all the time as a means of trading in and out of this position all the time. Um, there's, there's, you know, remember on the weekends, it's kind of a double-edged sword. If the market is, uh, you know, rallying hard into the week, and let's suppose like after this big move today and you know, it's like, what, Tom, four or five days in a row up after the Brexit vote last week, right? Right. And then we opened up down last yesterday and we went down and we opened up lower today, but we bounced back. Well, um, I, you know, I would, you know, again, you have to kind of use your good judgment about when you want to get out of this position. Um, but you, you've got to know this with um, closer in options, you're going to have decay that works harder and faster against you. Um, these weekly options, you know, they're really going to work against you quick, you know. Um, and maybe if you say, to your, you know, uh, my thought would be I would only use these if, if I had a long, if I had this position on in the back months here, which is kind of a back spread, short seven, long 10, um, you know, I would really be, and I'm delta neutral, and as we go, and it's just kind of baking here, which is you, you might kind of get nervous about it. But at the same instance, remember, you've sold seven of these options. So you could quickly get long by just flattening out and buying one of these options in. Um, and it's really just, you know, it's and that is why it's a trading position. Look at how fast that delta changes. I'm very neutral here. I just buy one of these. All of a sudden I'm long. And then now I'm. You know, if I was able to buy one, well, and I'm, I've got, I, I could also sell this one option out that I bought, or I could sell some of these 10 that I'm long out, and I'm always trading this position back and forth. It's a really, it's a really exciting position to trade in the sense that you're, you're right when you're trading, in the sense that in a market where it's really moving, you're, you, you feel like a genius because you're always moving your way. Um, and that being said, it's uh, it's an ongoing battle to manage this position. So Teddy asked uh, why August 12 and not August 19th. And I'm sure there's no magic answer, but um, no. it's right. just, I think, a function of time decay and how big your deltas are. So uh, um, right. And uh, remember, this you know this uh, event is um, this uh, you know this position. It is, you know, it's going to require, you can see the dollar value that it requires and that um, there, you know, in this instance, you're, you're trading in and out of these. Now, it, the dollar value I'm trying to uh, mention here is, let's suppose instead of this spread, let's just leave this here, but we use, uh, we go back out here to this August, let's use this August for a sake argument. You know, your risk is the dollar value of these options. Oh, look, they don't have half-point strikes here. So let's go back to using one that has half-point strikes. Let me see if half-point, yeah, they do. Okay, so let's go to 208 and a half, you know. And I might suggest to you, if you really like this, you know, try it with, uh, let's put a, let's do this. Let's use in between here. And then let's go 
here. Well, eight and a half. Boom. And let's use in between here. And let's buy five of these. And so I'm pretty neutral here. And, and I might suggest using this analyze page or using your um, um, oh Tom, I'm like option I'm, view or option at explore. Option view. Thank you, Tom. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, option view uh, to 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 practice with this. Uh, it's a really uh, you know we I always made money being backspread because I was always trading my positions. It, again, this is a position you this is a strategy you're going to have to be aggressive with. This is a strategy where trading more is better. Um, a lot of people who sell premium would ideally like it just to sit there. And I don't want to trade. I want to sit on my hands. I want this to melt for me. Well, if that's your philosophy, this is not your strategy. Um, because you want to trade this position. This is a trader's position. Um, you know, the thing is that it uh, it's going to cost you money. How much does this position cost? Well, let's look. We bought, oh, and ironically, we bought both of these at 366. So we got 10. I can tell you right now, 10 options at $366. Unless my math is wrong, it's $3,660. It's going to cost you to be long this position. Do you want to, you know, with uh, and and look at your risk profile? I mean, you could make a lot of money if, you know, you know, we uh, if we if, if we get a big move, if something happens overseas, you know, you're gonna have you're gonna find yourself in the right position. Um, let me see if we can get a better view. You know, and here's a couple of questions about how much decay do you have? Well. Every day you got in this instance forty seven dollars worth of decay. So can you make that? If the market's moving, you can. Um, but you I need think, that market movement. That's the I, bottom line. I think that's the gotcha. A lot of people try gamma scalping when it's quiet and they end up just, you know, eating all that theta and losing money and saying it doesn't work. But I think it helps to have the right time to put these things on, like now when the market's very volatile. Right. I mean, we're not timing the market. You know, it's more time in the market. When do you want to get in the market? Well, you want to get in the market when the market's moving. You want to get in, you want to put this position on, you want to be in when at the beginning of the week, when the market's trading. You don't want to get in this position if uh, if we're sitting tight here. And you can see, even as we're talking, we had a, a five point range in the S&P, so that's a 50 point 50 cent range in the uh in the e mini or yeah. not the e mini but the uh SPY. So you know you want this in an instance where you've got a big range and uh and that's the bottom line. It's a it's a really good strategy. It always paid off for me. You know, it because I always traded it aggressively. So uh, any thoughts on uh you know say you're watching the market, you're not in a this type of position, you see a little bit of a sell-off, volatilities pop up. Um, how do you feel about um, putting straddles on with that increase in volatility, knowing you know if it goes up, obviously the vols are going to come out and you're going to lose some premium. Right. Um, you know, there's, you know, again, you're talking about timing the market, Tom. And I, I, it's hard to time the market. There is no right answer about it. If you you know, uh, recently the volatility, the low in the volatility has been in the 13 or so range. Um, and it's always paid off to buy it down there this year. Um, but you got to be careful. It's, the, again, there's just like if you're going to do your, your, your uh, you know, 60-day or your 30-day condor, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to sell, well, you know, and, and the VIX is, you know, 13 or 14, and well, this happens to be your 30 day or your 60 day or your 90 day. I don't know when you do it spot. Well, and the VIX is 13. Well, remember, you're selling it, you're locking in that 13 volatility. You're buying it, you're locking in that 13 volatility. If the market breaks and the volatility goes up from 13 to 15, let's say, well, I like that a lot better than if 
I've put this volatility, I've put this long volatility play on and the VIX is 30 and I've just put this on. Well, you know, by the way, the, the high end of the range has been 30, unless I'm mistaken. You know, I'd rather do it when the VIX is low, just as a person would like to sell that volatility. If the VIX is 30, boy, that's when you premium sellers love this market. Sell it at 30. Oh, my. But you've just got to be very wary of the fact of what that VIX is in relation to Remember, this is volatility arbitrage at its finest here. Uh, I could I could write you a glossary, Tom, and it'd probably help everybody out by having the definition of, you know, volatility, um, you know, rather than having uh, giving you that opinion, Tom. You know, if the market breaks, do I buy a straddle? Well, you know, again, it would be really dependent on where the VIX is, where the volatility index is. A lot goes into it. Uh, did you see Brandon's question about the goal of adjustments? Is it to keep the Delta neutral? It is. Um, and, and and let me tell you this, Brandon, on the way, um, the, you know, the longer you could ride your Delta in the right direction, you know, the more money you're going to make. If, if you can see right now, I have five, six Deltas here. If I hedge this right now, I'm not going to make any money. What we need to, you have to recognize is that I think we did this little straddle here, this five lot, right when um, we had, uh, we were at 208.50. So you need, and now we're at 208.60, whatever. We're not far enough away. We need to really move uh, away from this. And by, yes, and what the guy's question or follow up statement was the, you know, you're taking profits and returning to delta neutral with the strategy. Right. Now you could remember, you could trade and reduce the position by selling out these options or you know, if you want, you could also trade these other options against it because you won't need more margin to, you know, let's suppose we went up, you know, from 20867, we went up to 210. And by the end of the day, is that un, is that crazy to say that? I don't think so. I don't think being up 15 points from here would be unexpected at all. It would be in the SPY would be up to a dollar, a little less than a dollar fifty. So at the let's suppose we went out and played golf right now, really quick, and at five to three we came back. These options are still trading, and we were really long. And then at that time. We said, oh, I'm going to sell these two tens. Oh, that'll flatten me out. Well, this would be a, this option has two days to go. Um, it'd be a great way to flatten out your delta. And uh, I hope that helps. I think that this is a great strategy, again, for instances when the market is moving. And it seems like it, it's kind of slowing down right now. But uh, um, did, did you see Rita's question? No, I didn't. Uh, so, so basically, you stay delta neutral and take profits on on spikes in volatility, and then she has to what trading platform are you using now? Uh, I'm using Thinkorswim. Um, the uh, you, you again, you don't want to necessarily do it in spikes in volatility. As much as if we have uh, in instances where there's been aggressive price movement. And I would, uh, you know, I, I like to do it a lot more when the volatility is down here in the low teens, in the low end of the range, um, versus when it's in the high end of the range. Uh, it's much more, uh, it's, it's ultimately profitable if you have big price. And what happens if one day, you know, we, you know, yesterday, I, I, when I woke up yesterday, uh, I can't. There was a headline on the TV, you know, Italian banks under pressure. Well, you know, that, one, that, that kind of headline is exactly what this position loves. Because before you can get to the channel that shows you what the S&P futures are, all of a sudden you've got a big winner here on your hands because you know the market's going to be aggressively moving one way or another. And this morning when I asked, they said the European 
you know, union, the, uh, the European markets were down as much as 2%. Well, if, you know, and this might be the instance where the gal asked, you know, what you do when you spike out today? Well, if the European markets were down 2%, you know, is there a likely, is there a chance we could, we in the United States could be down 2% by the end of the day? Sure. How much would that be? Let's think about that. That would be like 2% on the SPY at 208. Like a four point move, right? That'd be a four point move. Would that work for this position? Heck yeah. Um, you know, and um, so those are the, you know, this is why I believe that this is the kind of environment you want to do this in. But remember, do it, on, I wouldn't do it much later than halfway through today if you're going to do it for, you know, and just to summarize, if you're going to do a buy uh, a straddle, give yourself time to be wrong. Um, buy uh, back month options. You know, give yourself 30 days to work with this so it doesn't decay too fast on you. Number two, uh, my, my thought would be be flat as you can at the end of every day. Whether you sell out options that you have on, that you put on originally, or whether you, um, you know, trade other options against this position, or you trade the underlying against this position, my thought to you would be be flat um, at the end of the day so that you can, you know, profit either way we move here. So, um, and, and again, put the position on the beginning of the week, you know, look for the lower end of the volatility range and put it on delta neutral. I think we had, we talked about a lot, Tom. We did, and uh, we usually like to wrap these up at about an hour, and we're just right, just over, so this is a good time to stop, I think. So, cool. uh, Casey, really appreciate you coming on. I'm sure we'll uh, sure. we'll have you on many more times, and um, you know, Casey is going to be starting that trading group on, I think it's Mondays. So okay. uh, uh, we'll hopefully see a lot of you at Capital Discussions, and um, welcome, Casey. It's been a, a great to have you back in uh, in the trading Thank arena. You. I appreciate it. I really enjoyed it, Tom. Thanks a bunch for having me on. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.